Hi, Doc. Just checking if I'm audible. Hello. Hello. Hello, Gaga. Hello. I really need to know if you, uh, I'm audible. <laughs> no, you're audible. Oh, yeah, there you are. You uh, Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, I can hear you very clearly. Okay, oh, oh that's good. So when you're ready, you can share your slide. I've enabled um, slide share. Yeah, okay. I guess you can see it. Charles. Hello. I'm still yeah. still loaded. Yes, yes, now I can see it. Now I can see it. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank all right, you so all right. much. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you super so much. So what, what I'll just ask is, because I know 
our colleagues are usually very slow. What I would ask is just for us to just give them five minutes to join in. Yeah. So that there yeah. isn't a, there's not too much confusion. So I just bear I will ask you to bear with me in that regard, and then we just give them five minutes. That's correct. I can wait. Thank you so much. Yeah, you'll let me know when to start. Awesome. So, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to just welcome you to the first BDU session of the year, where we'll be giving you a presentation um, from the Occupational Health Occupational Medicine side. So, I won't, I won't um, spoil the presentation, I'll allow, I'll allow the speaker to introduce the topic, uh, but I'd like to 
ask that before we we start the session, I'll just kindly like to ask that can we please ensure that we mute our mics just to try and reduce feedback. And I'll also ask that can we please um, keep the questions. I don't know, Jeva will let me know whether she prepares um, questions to, 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 to be asked during the presentation, but in case she doesn't, make sure that you just make them in the ch chat box. Feel free to, to post the questions to me directly if you are, un if you are afraid to, to send them in the general inbox. Uh, but otherwise, let's let's be attentive. Let's um, ask all the questions we have. Uh, I think this is a topic that not a lot of us are aware of, and we do not know uh, much about uh, both in terms of diagnosing as, as well as repairing. So, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Eva to um, the audience and ask that she introduces herself. Um, and uh, her qualifications, if she doesn't mind, as well as the topic of discussion. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Charles. Um, uh, I hope you all can hear me. Um, the internet, of course, decided to act up at the uh, a, a few hours back. Uh, in my office, so I hope this will go well. And if it doesn't, it will be, yeah, a disaster, really. Uh, but anyway, my name is Keba. I am, I am an occupational physician, um, as well as, yeah, it's already writing here. My internet is connection is is in, unstable. If 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 you have any troubles, I will. Uh, uh, hearing me or seeing the slides, I will connect on my phone instead of my my, my office internet. Uh, as I said, I'm Keba, um, occupational medicine uh, physician, and I'm also a family physician. And today's topic is on occupational diseases, uh, when and what to, to refer. I'm hoping at the end of the day, uh, many of us will be able to identify those conditions that maybe need to be referred uh, for a diagnostic uh, assessment um, in occupational medicine. So on the, yeah, on the agenda, uh, please do uh, notify me with a chat on a chat if you don't hear me. Uh, on the agenda is uh, exactly why do we have to refer for a diagnostic uh, assessment of a suspected occupational disease, uh, who to, you ref to refer to, uh, no, how to refer, when to refer, what can be referred, assessment done, then what, and we also have to know that not every work-related illness or condition is compensable. So I thought these were the, the things that are important. They might be boring to some of you or some of you, but you will have to just bear with me. So why do we have to refer for a diagnostic assessment of a suspected occupational disease? And um, so I thought maybe I should take, um, I should start by um, explaining exactly what an occupational disease is. Uh, and this is definition is by ILO the International Labor Organization, um, which terms it as a disease that covers, a, a, or it covers any disease contracted as a result of an exposure to risk factors arising from a work activity. And out of this uh, a definition, we have one element that is very important. We have to establish if there is a causal relationship between this exposure um, in a specific working environment or that particular activity and the disease that is at question. So that is the whole reason why um, uh, we think this has to be referred for diagnostic assessment. It's not always easy to just say, yes, it is, a, it is indeed an occupational disease or not. 
Um, so, so in that regard, the examples that are easy maybe to, to say yes, a, a person has a, a, a lung cancer, a, it is caused by asbestos. Is it really, could they have been exposed to other things? Could they have been smokers? Um, how much asbestos were they uh, exposed to um, and all that? And there could be other other hazards also that people might think they will um, they could cause that lung cancer, and, and so so we have to go through a lot of criteria um, to come to that uh, conclusion if this is indeed a, an occupational disease or not. Um, so. Um, let me just go back to uh, the other. So uh, due to that, uh, so, so the diagnosis is, is detailed and complex and it requires a thorough examination of the patient's medical occupational history, physical exams, a lot of lab tests, like just the normal way that we, we do, but, but we need a thorough that are one and uh, we need, uh, maybe at some point we will go through exactly what it takes um, uh, to come to that conclusion. But right now I'm just going through all these, just an overview of diseases that um, uh, are out there and maybe need uh, uh, to be assessed and those patients need to be uh, referred to uh, occupational medicine practitioners. Um, so apart from that, uh, um, uh, as I said, it is it requires knowledge of those criteria uh, for diagnosing each disease, from the asthmas, the occupational asthmas, to the asbestos-related uh, diseases, silica-related diseases, and all those. They have their own criteria. One also needs to have knowledge on the occupations and hazard exposures associated with them. You need to know the OEL, which are occupational exposure limits. Uh, you, we have to know the intensity of the exposure. We have to know what exactly was uh, that particular person was exposed to. And in some cases, we use the information on his historical exposures. I think it will come to those as, as we, we go on. And the main main point, of course, is that uh, um, the relationship of that exposure and specific uh, diseases. Is it causal, a causal relationship? Is it just strongly associated or is it limited? There's a limited association between those two. So those are the things that we go through when we do such assessments. Um, there might be also... yeah. I'm so I'm so sorry for interrupting you during a presentation. Um, I I just yeah. realized that your presentation is in what they call presenter mode, where we can see the slides and notes and stuff like that. Are you able to put it in slideshow mode where the where the presentation occupies oh. the entire screen? Oh yeah, okay. I thought you could see only the. Um, so, I thought you could. Eh, eh, sorry. Um, which one do I? Which what do I? Eh, the slide one. See all slides, <laughs> and then I see. Uh, hey, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> which one? You, but I, I think just just end, and unless somebody knows, but I think just end the slide get out like the show and then and then try to look for a button and, and then maybe I'll show you which button I usually press. I, I should escape me, go back in a way. Him, okay. just, yeah. just, him, just, just escape the there. whole thing if you don't mind. Um just give it a second. On my side I still see the same thing. Um are you still okay it's it's loading it's loading maybe it's my internet connection. Okay. Okay, hmm. perfect. Then there's there's a there's a thing at the bottom bottom right which looks like a like a flipboard on on yeah, on slideshow. Do you see? Mm. So when you That's click the one on that it, what I was happens? actually ahead. 
Yeah. And okay, let's 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 go to the top where it says slideshow at where the test where this file home insert draw design. There's a part where it's written slideshow. Yeah, let me just check. Uh, on the on the upper the upper tab, somewhere on the upper. Let's see, mid lines, and then I can wait, see wait, apps. Wait, when you when you exit, um, hey, apologies to the audience for this technical difficulty. Um, yeah, that there's there's a part at the top where i just between animations and record. Um, um, okay, um, okay. No, I can't see that. Uh, <laughs> no, no. So after after you after you exit um, this this slideshow present presentation mode, that original um, window that you had. Yeah. Had okay, I go in, back again. Yeah. Here. Okay. In, um, let me just again. go back Sorry again. About, okay. Um, Sorry about that. Oh no, now I can't, uh, now nothing is happening when I try to escape it. Eh? Sure, I think it's okay. We'll, we'll just leave it um, the way it is um, so that we don't interrupt the presentation too much. Okay, Um. yeah, okay. I had that one screen and then the okay, screen okay. white. Okay, try, try the hide, the hide presenter. Presenter view. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. Let's see what happened. Yeah, I think it happened. Is it? Okay, just give it a second. My internet is slow. Just give me a second to visualize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, perfect. No, it's, it's amazing now. Now, now, amazing. It's, now you can see it properly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Apologies. Yeah. For that. Apologies, <laughs> colleagues. Yeah, oh, so that was that about uh, why, or oh, we could. Yeah, I was, I just thought maybe this also is important uh, to note that, uh, um, you know, occupational medicine as part of occupational health is uh, highly regulated uh, through a lot of legislation, conventions, policies. It's prone to litigation and all these guidance and recommendations that we, we give can have also um, life-changing consequences for the workers. And, and um, these are things that we also have to think about. If I tell a baker that uh, they are allergic to um, some allergens in the flower and they can't be a baker anymore, what do they do and all those things so so we need to to be to be kind of careful as to as to how we 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 give recommendations and guidance for some workers it can be like okay they now just get out of here so that we we, we have less of a problem um yeah uh, why should we care about these uh, occupational diseases uh, um, ILO has estimated that about 2.3 million uh, people uh, around the world die uh, due to work-related accidents yearly. And this corresponds to 6,000 deaths every single day. Um, I think it's a lot uh, to lose. And mind you, working people are normally young people. So if we are going to let uh, most of them um, to die uh, when we could have done something because basically all occupational diseases and injuries are preventable. Um, yeah, and we can see also the numbers that uh, 314 million occupational accidents yearly, uh, which could have been um, um, avoided. And these are not the fatal ones. It's like, oh, it's a group of them, not just the, the fatal ones. And um, yeah, so so these are the the reasons why we should uh, uh, care about about these. They are young people, and uh, there are many of them. Uh, who can refer for diagnostic assessment? Of course, the medical personnel. Uh, that's one is a given. But occupational health and safety professionals, other than uh, 
um, medical personnel. You know, we have she officers. We have, uh, um, yeah, other people out there who can also refer to us, and they will have to. Or, or should I say the companies and uh, enterprises and all that, they should actually be referring uh, through the um, um, occupational health and safety professionals because we don't wanna be talking to the companies. They, they don't have to know what uh, um, the health uh, statuses or health, um, um, you know, what our workers are, um, have as diseases and all those things. So we just give them recommendations. Insurances and compensation, compensation bodies also um, usually refer. Uh, and then cancer registry normally would refer via the compensation in some areas where it is known uh, historically that uh, you know, as best as, for example, in South Africa, uh, we know that uh, there are many ex minors um, that were uh, exposed to uh, silica dust, uh, the cancer registry might capture them and then refer them to the compensation bodies so that uh, they be compensated. But mind you, the, the, the referrals from these uh, medical personnel and occupational health professionals would be different from those of insurance and compensation. Those ones are more like in the legal um uh, in the legal uh, side um, of medicine. So why should we, when, to, when do we uh, want to refer? And I would say as soon as an occupational condition is suspected. And I said condition because uh, it might be a disease that has not been uh, developed yet. And uh, uh, why should we do that? There's an opportunity to prevent diseases from developing or progressing to a chronic stage. A classic example of that would be maybe a patient having rhinitis, and we know it always, always after that comes the asthma, almost always. And so we might be able to already do something about that before it progresses to a more serious disease or maybe an asthma that is not yet chronic, which would eventually be chronic if this patient continues to be exposed to uh, whatever allergens uh, they are exposed to at work. Um, we can also protect other workers because if we know that uh, um, maybe a certain area um, that people are being exposed to, to um, hazards, um, then we can always guide and give recommendations for interventions in the workplaces. Um, and another thing that we talked about is need to or, uh, for objective confirmation of suspected diseases. Um, um, and as we have already mentioned, the diagnosis is very uh, detailed. Uh, so just really me in my family practice saying that, yeah, you have an occupational, I, I think you have an asthma and it is not enough from, from the clinical um, um, point of view. It's not enough. We do need those tools. Um, and I think I had mentioned earlier that in some cases they might need have criteria. What is it? that will really um, tell these uh, insurances, maybe the, the, the compensation bodies that you really indeed have an asthma, they would need all the, the tools uh, to be used and to exclude other diseases. And again, um, as asthma, you might need, you will need a spirometry. I don't think anybody would accept uh, an asthma without uh, a spirometry. Uh, with and without beta agonist to differentiate from COPD. You might need the provocation tests, a specific inhalation challenge tests that um, I think Dr. Natasha in uh, Sidileha does that. This is whereby you take um, exactly that uh, uh, you are exposed to that is giving symptoms and uh, you are exposed to it in a very controlled manner. 
it's a bit controversial, I have to say, um, even in the in Europe, it was very controversial. Should we really expose these patients again to 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 these um, agents that uh, they react to? Uh, but sometimes we have to when we don't know maybe the composition of uh, uh, the dust or the fumes or whatever that it is that they're exposed to. Chest X-ray, of course, to exclude other diseases, we might need hypersensitivity tests. Um, and maybe even refer to um, dermatologists to go and help us with some of these uh, uh, diagnostic um, tests that we that we need. Um, how to refer? Uh, for me, this was the most important part of it. Um, it's a normal referral from a doctor to doctor. Uh, in this case. Um, a different one, uh, um, if, if uh, for example, uh, a SHE officer was um, referring to me, I would uh, definitely need more stuff. Uh, I would need um, um, a consent uh, letter from this patient that they indeed do want to come uh, to us. Um, I would need uh, a bit, uh, a, when I send back the report, I will also ask this patient to look at that uh, um, uh, report uh, and also consent if it should go back to. So, so there will be different uh, um, processes around the referrals, uh, uh, depending on who the referral is coming from. But this one is 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 a given. So. It's just a normal one. And uh, the reasons for referral, is it for diagnostic um, purposes? Is it for, for is, are you thinking they have to be compensated? I mean, what whatever reasons or they need to be helped, the workplaces is tricky and all those things. It can be nice to know uh, why it is so that I don't do the opposite of what one actually had intended. The medical history is crucial um, yeah, uh, genetic dispositions and all those things are uh, very important. And then the occupational history and exposures do not need to be detailed because I am going to do the detailing of all, all this, but at least what this person does and uh, maybe the tasks if one knows uh, where they work, maybe how long, um, if you, one knows what are they exposed to, but I am going to drill that patient uh, about their workplaces and I need details uh, of almost everything. And then all activities associated with the, the symptoms. It's, um, it helps a lot to, to say what they do. Uh, if it says, uh, suspecting occupational asthma is sending for referral. Then I sit down. I'm like, okay, what is this? Uh, where is this occupational uh, asthma coming from? Or where is this COPD coming from? I need I need a little bit more information. Uh, and it doesn't have to be sentences. It can be just just the uh, point. Previous jobs and tasks, if uh, one knows. Uh, and then symptoms are very important also, isn't it? What is it? How, how are they reacting? How, are, how is their health affected by this exposure? Um, are they having uh, uh, shortness of breath? Um, are they having neuronitis? Are they um, having any kinds of pain? Anything that could help and treatment if it's possible. So what can be referred in essence, uh, any disease or condition that is suspected to be work-related? This is because uh, I'm thinking it doesn't have to be um, a, a compensation case. It can be where we can guide the patient. It can be where we can stop diseases from developing. We can do so many things uh, for this patient not to lose their jobs. 
Uh, and here are the list. Uh, one can categorize them as they wish, um, as occupational diseases from hazards, however one wants. So I'm going to go just through a little bit of them. It's just really overview of uh, uh, what one can encounter out there. And this is not exhaustive. Uh, the, the material is so much that uh, we we use uh, just those resources really. We, we, I still, after so many years of working with it, I still don't know all the chemicals out there or other hazards that cause other diseases. Sometimes I have to go back and, uh, and look for them. Uh, the classic ones for us will be uh, the occupational lung diseases. Pneumoconiasis, of course, occupational asthma, COPD, lung cancer, mesothelioma, hypersensitive uh, uh, pneumonitis, which is what's called the extrinsic allergic um, alveolitis before. So here are our classic ones, uh, silicosis, uh, caused by silica dust, of course. And then we have a coal mine in Botswana. So these are the ones that we can also uh, come across. Uh, the coal workers uh, pneumoconiosis, uh, or CWP, black lung, however uh, people call it, uh, coal mine dust and uh, asbestosis. And who are these people? They will be X miners, especially uh, we have so many of them from South Africa. Um, in the olden days when our grandparents worked there. There could be also um, a current miners. And mind you, even though these are, they, they are very drilled at uh, occupational health and safety, these big mines, uh, but there are small ones that we don't know yet uh, how they are doing in their, uh, with their occupational health and safety. So those are the things that uh, to think about that there might be other people uh, coming from Botswana with uh, uh, these diseases, I mean, uh, who have worked in Botswana. Recently, there's been these uh, kitchen top grinders, those who make granite and quartz, the kitchen tops that we use, the fancy ones, the beautiful ones we have in our homes. There's been a lot of them that have actually developed uh, uh, silicosis in this age. And these are young people that will be in their 20s and they would probably be like mm, ca casually um, hired. They come and make money short time for a very short time and they don't use any protective wear. Uh, uh, can be massively exposed to uh, uh, silicosis. So, so we have to think like that, that it's not just X minus and minus, uh, or quarry, those who work in quarries and all that, that are other um, uh, sectors also. Those who made those faded jeans that we had a few years back, uh, thank God they are out of fashion, um, or oh, they're still there maybe. Uh, those jeans also, they were young people. Uh, I think this was in Turkey, where they make a uh, lot of clothes. And these boys would sit down and uh, try to use sand, you know, sandy silica, uh, and use that sand to make them faded. And, uh, and uh, that's how they, they, they got exposed. And these would come, of course, some would be asymptomatic and some will come with the uh, oxygens on their bags and all that. Now, we have to remember also silica tuberculosis. Everybody who is exposed to silica has a silica dust that has a high risk of developing uh, a tuberculosis even many years after they have been uh, uh, out of the exposure so 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 that's why uh, in South Africa the those who have tuberculosis and are exposed or have also silicosis uh, at the same time compensated so silica tuberculosis is it's also actually a, a very interesting, um, you, you can see the like exposure to uh, silica dust and exposure to 
uh, uh, the tuberculin uh, bacteria, how you how the the the, the, the risks of uh, um, contracting tuberculosis goes up just because of uh, a silica a dust exposure. Um, asbestos exposure is supposed to be historical, uh, but I've found out that in many African countries have not banned uh, asbestos yet. Uh, where is it used? Some used to mine it. I was wondering if I read recently that a mine in, in Zimbabwe uh, is going to open very soon. It is an asbestos mine. Um, and of course, it's used in uh, especially building materials. Um, it was used as cement. It was is a good insulator. And it was used in ceilings, tiles, brake pads, especially of uh, these old, old trucks. And so, so, so the mechanics who who repaired these brake pads could get asbestos, uh, uh, asbestos related uh, uh, diseases. Uh, the carpets, uh, gloves, even gloves, because they are very heat resistant, so they could be used where heat is used. And, um, and they use uh, those gloves that are made of asbestos with other materials, of course. And uh, oops, there are stories where wives of those that either mined um, uh, asbestos or worked in, uh, um, or worked in um, a, you know, building materials that, uh, that uh, you know, you could use the powder, the powdered, um, asbestos and mix it like cement and imagine how much exposure that is and that woman would be washing the clothes of the, 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 the husband's uh, workwear and they, they would get uh, um, uh, even asbestosis you need to be massively exposed to, to, to get uh, asbestosis and they will get that and definitely they will get a mesothelioma you have you don't have to be that exposed to get mesothelioma of our asbestos. And uh, in some areas, they do compensate those women as well, which is cool, I think. Uh, here are some, or some other, um, just um, other forms uh, of uh, pneumoconiosis. I think the common one that we can talk of is uh, siderosis, the other ones I've never seen. But aluminium in Botswana, there's a lot of aluminium manufacturing, like windows and doors and all that. I wonder how it's done. It would be nice to visit them and see how they do all this uh, so that we can uh, be prepared in the future if we will get uh, these patients. Co occupational asthma is very common. Very, very common, uh, probably very, very underdiagnosed, like all other occupational diseases. And it can be, you know, the agent can be, the, the, the uh, causing agent could be uh, from the work or it could be exacerbated by work. And it can be allergic or irritative um, symptoms. Uh, so these people, they get symptoms associated with certain tasks, activities, or use of those products that are um, asthma causing. And uh, some can have a late phase of reaction. Instead of having reaction right there at work, they can have it in the evening. Yeah. Here, uh, this was written by, this was taken from uh, Professor Mohammed uh, Jibay, Jibai, I think he's called from UCT. Uh, the professor of occupational medicine there at the at the division of occupational uh, medicine. Um, from in the, they 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 were trying to find out what uh, causes asthma in different uh, regions, industrialized and developing countries. And uh, we can see already that uh, most of them are actually the same. I think we have our isocyanates that are very potent. Uh, asthma allergens uh, or allergens. There we have them on both sides, the cereals. We have them welding fumes. They should actually go both ways. I don't know why uh, not on the other side or maybe because our welders work outside. They might not be as exposed as those in uh, industrialized countries. Wood dust. Um, 
animal this is a classic animal um, exposures from animals is, is a classic one aldehydes latex pesophates are found in um, um, uh, hairdressing products like the colorings the, you know the colors that we use the pans and all that um, soldier flux is used in um, like soldiering, like metals and all that, especially in electronics. So we have like, um, if anybody comes and says, okay, we, we work with this and all that, one can uh, uh, find that easily. Seafood is also a classic uh, out there. Um, the cleaning agents, uh, it's uh, the one that is uh, has been kind of like, uh, proven in the late years, uh, just recently. Um, yeah, so those are the metals are not a, are also a classic. Uh, yeah, and who is actually um, at risk? Um, we see woodworkers, of course. Uh, there are a lot of plants out there that are. Uh, um, uh, sensitizers. Automotive uh, workers, uh, we talked about uh, those uh, isocyanates and epoxy compounds, spray painting and yeah, epoxy compounds. I saw recently in Botswana that uh, we have epoxy uh, flooring, uh, epoxy flooring and terrazzo flooring, that types of floors that are like a bit fancy, very nice and durable, uh, but they use compounds that are a uh, strong sensitizers. They would get skin, uh, occupational skin diseases and asthma. Um, electronic workers, welders, classic one. Uh, these, uh, when you weld, uh, you they, they produce fumes. As they are. These fumes, they contain the nickel, the cobalt, the chromium. Uh, from what they've been made from. So these would uh, um, would now uh, 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 come out. And, and the welders, they don't use protective wear. Even when you give them that they are, they are not good at using protective wear, a bit notorious for that. Of course, those who process uh, food, um, uh, the bakers are a classic. Uh, there will be the farmers, the cleaners, and laboratory uh, workers. Yeah, so many ones. These ones are uh, for health care workers. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how much a latex would give. Uh, actually, uh, you must be really uh, putting your head in latex there. So it does give skin diseases, of course, because it's a sensitizer, so allergic contact dermatitis. Um, but maybe the lab, uh, especially uh, um, pharmacists, could be, ex uh, um, they are the ones that can be exposed to a lot of pharmaceuticals that are also sensitizers, but not so much occupational uh, asthma, but you can always be uh, surprised uh, uh, amongst the healthcare workers. So I don't know if this will if this will work, but uh, one can uh, actually it says the same things. I might just as well skip it since we we were a bit delayed there. Um, it's just to uh, go onto this link in NIOSH and you'll see some of these same um, uh, occupations and uh, occupational exposures out there. COPD. COPD is a uh, under-recognized as an occupational uh, disease. When I came to Botswana, I thought maybe it would be talked more about because the uh, uh, silica dust exposure would um, uh, lead to a uh, COPD. And, um, but it wasn't, uh, so I don't know why um, um, silicosis is more talked about, uh, but not COPD. Yeah, anyway. These are the occupations and uh, sectors that uh, you would uh, think uh, or you would uh, think of uh, 
um, uh, their workers may be contracting COPD. And most of them, bricklaying, pottery, ceramic, quarries, uh, uh, ceramic, uh, sorry, quarries, stone menzonry, foundry workers, all these, uh, they are actually exposed to, to silica, maybe to other uh, vapors, and uh, maybe to other um, gases and all those things, but but uh, mainly silica dust is always is the the the, the main maybe the main um, um, uh, culprit here. Cadmium uh, is used a lot in batteries, in uh, pigments, and uh, all those. Anybody who comes with COPD, uh, um, I would ask them if they were exposed to cadmium, it really, really is a, is a problem. Yeah, I forgot our construction workers that threw their bricks and all those things, they use um, products that, or materials that uh, contain uh, silica. Uh, and uh, what are the causing agents as we said? Cadmium, uh, dust and fumes, grains, uh, flower dust, mineral dust, Organic dust, the silica, welding fumes again. Um, and it's not many, many years ago that I think I was still training as an occupational uh, medicine resident when uh, welding fumes were approved as a causing agent for COPD and asthma. Okay. And again, yeah, this one I think we might have to go and uh, I don't know how this will work out. Uh, or maybe I have to go out. I think we have to see this one because I feel it's important. Um, the monograms, but uh, let me just... Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we are here. Mm. Okay, I don't know if you will see this one or do I have to share again? Charles, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Hello? Hello. <laughs> yeah, sorry about yeah? that. Um, mm. I, are you, am, am I, should, should I share this one? Um, you, you can. Should I, you can I was trying to get into a link that I thought was very important. There's no problem. You can you can do that. You can reshare. Uh, reshare. Yeah, do I stop sharing and then reshare? Uh oh. Um. So what you yeah you just yeah you just reshare. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'll, I'll do that. Sorry about that, guys. But. Uh, I thought this one was uh, very important. Um, so let me see if I will find it. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I'm here. Um, okay, there, there it is. Um, this one is very important. I, I, I got it from uh, IAC. IAC is the international uh, agency uh, for uh, IARC agency for research on cancer, and um, they are really good. You see it? You see it? Yes, yes, I can. You we, see there? Yeah, but it's just that it's it's very, it's very. Yeah, um, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's yeah. a bit uh, yeah weird. Okay, I'll try to, but anyway, I have to zoom into the areas where I, so maybe you will see it a little bit better there. If I zoom in, I know the screens are not uh, as, as, as I had hoped. I tried to download it and have it. Maybe you see now, lung and uh, under there, this is like a, a poster that you can actually even have in your own office or if you are interested in this. Um, and you can see on the lung there, 
so many chemicals that are uh, cancer causing. These have been researched on and have been um, found out to be, we categorize them from like a group one, group two, A, two, B, C, a group one as they are cancer causing. And, and you see the aluminum production, you can see the asbestos, all forms, by the way, because sometimes I hear people asking uh, what kind of asbestos and how does it matter really all of them would cause uh, uh, diseases. Uh, chromium, uh, cadmium is there, coal, gasification, uh, diesel exhaust, I think you can see. I hope you can see them. But in any way, there is a link on that. Uh, there is a link on your um, on that uh, what you call presentation that you will get, and you will be able to see them. Uh, if a person comes in and says, "Oh, I've been exposed to this or, and all that," I think I have I have um, a cancer because of it. One can really look quickly, but you can never make a, a conclusion out of that, of course. Uh, quitting, sm quitting smoking is protective, so the green ones are uh, protective. Welding films, there they are down there, they cause cancer suit, silica dust, of course, especially the newly ground one, like in the quarries, those, uh, those ones are very potent. Um, and you can go through the pleura, look, asbestos, uh, and you can go through the larynx. I mean, any kind of cancer, uh, we can uh, um, actually go and um, uh, check if those uh, are, are known to be cancer causing or not. So I want to open the second one uh, because it says the same thing, just that it's not a, um, just that it's not a, uh, yeah, I think we, we, we go into the same, uh, that same other problem, uh, Charles, but uh, yeah, I think we can just continue so that we don't waste much time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so apart from this, um, uh, uh, occupational cancers, I'll try to get rid of this one. This one is a uh, uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis. I just took it because I thought um, it might be something that we find from those of ours that work in the, in the especially farmers and those who work in warehouses that are maybe housing the haze and and the the grains and all those things so we might find this it's a it's a very interesting one it mimics asthma yet it's an interstitial uh, lung disease and it's due to the inflammation of the alveoli due to allergic reaction to inhaled microorganisms such as molds fungi, animal and pro uh, plant proteins, chemicals, it can be many things and there are two forms, the acute part and the chronic, and, and it, is, it does cause scarring of the lungs, hence uh, interstitial. And these are the examples of people who can, uh, uh, bed viewers, they can also, uh, it's called bed fancy Islam, and they can be exposed to uh, droppings uh, of uh, uh, birds, farmers, you know, uh, the grains and the, you know, it's all, it can be moldy out in there. So those are the people that can uh, be exposed and get this one. It, it's a very interesting disease and it's uh, a bit hard to diagnose. And, uh, skin diseases are very common as well, but mostly the dermatitis, the skin cancers, and of course the infections and all other ones also are just as important. When I was um, when the internet was acting up, I was about to link um, to um, what's the word link um, so that uh, have links so that one can go in and see the different types of um, uh, the, the, the occupations and the exposures and all that so that it's easy to just uh, um, uh, uh, go in and refer. Um, and um, of course, these are skin sensitizers, uh, chemicals, especially in hairdressing, baking, metal work, 
um, in um, you know these uh, chemical industries, um, so many places where we can get sensitizer pharmaceuticals, uh, and of course there are also irritants, uh, including water and the use of gloves. Just using gloves for a few hours can actually, excuse me, be a good enough um, exposure to cause these uh, skin diseases. And we work very well with, uh, would work very well with the uh, dermatologists to, to help us. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, now I can do that one. Uh, okay, my computer is freezing. Uh, let's go, let's hope. Yeah, uh, these are the some of the sensitizers, the metals are classic, uh, chromium, nickel, uh, mercury, paints are a classic. Um, um, I forgot that, uh, what that PPD, I wonder if it could be uh, used in hair uh, colors, you know, those coloring um, uh, products that we use rubber additives, natural resins, of course, um, artificial ones. Um, uh, this would be where the epoxies come in, the polyurethanes, uh, all those kinds, biocides, uh, plants, there are many sensitizers uh, that are plants, actually. Pharmaceuticals we mentioned as well. But the list is not uh, is not even complete because uh, the, the the internet was not. But uh, when Charles sends them, they will be. Uh, I hope it will be complete. Okay, I'm gonna rush through New neurological diseases, uh, encephalopathy, especially the toxic one due to solvents, neuropathies. Uh, you can get or oh, just like we can get um, a, um, a polyneuropathy from uh, diabetes. And the likes, you can also get uh, a, them from solvents, from uh, yeah, metals and other things. And here it's mostly the agriculture, the automotive, the painters, uh, plastic industry, they have these uh, solvents and all that. Musculoskeletal diseases, uh, very, very common, probably the most common. Uh, and here are the repetitive and static work, heavy lifting, awkward postures, yeah, uh, vibration as well, heavy lifting, pushing, stacking, and our construction workers, mechanics, operators, uh, the health workers, our cleaners, drivers, they, they, they are the ones exposed. But this one is the most difficult to actually uh, find the causal uh, relationship between the exposure and the and the um, and the disease. In exception of this here, carpal tunnel syndrome, when you are exposed to vibrations, uh, epicondylitis, subsitis, because you pressure your your elbows or your knees, you work on your knees. Yeah, these are things. Infections, classical for us. Uh, the tuberculosis and but don't forget also others other um, uh, the rabies you know our vets MRS, MRSA is also known uh, a culprit in this respiratory infections of course and this contact with animals patient care and our supporting staff we always always forget them our cleaners like they are the ones that would be probably taking all that rubbish and maybe coming and cleaning that room that has still has the tuberculin aerosols out there yeah so so we shouldn't forget them and these are also like uh, i would leave them uh, because of the uh, because of time and then psychiatric disorders, I have to be honest, the only one that I know uh, can be approved as an occupational disease is PTSD because of, uh, you know, our, of course, our forces, uh, the, uh, the um, soldiers, they can uh, be exposed to traumatic events, but it could be a teacher in America, for example, a teacher who sits there and they uh, the kids are, you know, the shootings, school shootings, and then somebody comes in and shoots and all that. So they, some would develop PTSD and it will be approved as an, um, as an occupational disease. 
Uh, of course, the others will have to prove that direct link between the exposure and the disease. You do the same thing with PTSD, it's just that it's a, a, a very easy to do that. Uh, other physical hazards, uh, the noise induced hearing losses. This, uh, this is, uh, sorry, noise induced hearing loss, uh, very common also, classical is everywhere. So there will be many people coming, but oops, oops, there are other non-occupational non causes such as listening to high music, going to rock festivals and all that. Vibration, um, perhaps, um, uh, I would imagine it's not as common as it is in the, because it uh, it thrives where there is where it's cold. Uh, so I think in the cold and um, uh, temperate climates, it, 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 there is more of those there. Kapal tunnel syndrome, we've talked about it. The radiations and then toxicology, that one, the list is endless. And I put in there the list of occupational diseases from ILO uh, because these are the, 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 the ones that guide uh, who can be um, compensated and who cannot be compensated. So now uh, just a minute and then I'll be done. Um, so what do we do after this assessment? You know, We can advise and guide uh, the patient or the employer on uh, how to uh, prevent, uh, how to control these uh, workplace hazards uh, and on preventive uh, measures, what can they use and all that. So that's a, in ideally we should also, if things were, or occupational health and safety was working uh, well in Botswana, we should be uh, really referring these people to, for compensation, those that we get, that we know uh, have contracted or, or or have assessed and concluded that they have an occupational disease, we should be actually be referring them for compensation. And then it can also trigger workplace investigations by uh, labor inspectorate. Um, if they see that there are many coming uh, from this quarry, there are many people coming with silicosis or, or whatever disease that it is, so they might go there and check if they are, what is it that they're doing, not doing well. That should be put in place. So, and then, like I said, not every work-related illness or condition is compensable. Normally the countries, they have their own lists. Uh, Botswana, I think, uses the Botswana Factories Act of 1976, very old, like us. Um, but uh, uh, we also have, I think though, they do, and I stand to be corrected, they, um, they do consider the, and use the list that I know um, has posted out there. But I cannot say 100% about this, so, so uh, don't take my word for it. Another thing that, the very last thing that I would like to say is, when you send people for assessment, don't tell them that they have an occupational disease because we might not find an occupational disease. And the patient, they come and say, I have a disease. And then I go and assess and assess and assess and I'm like, but uh, you don't have a disease and it becomes a problem. So I think that's all that I had. I hope it was helpful. Thank you. No, no, Keba, thank you. Thank you so much for, for that presentation. It was, it was very informative. Um, given the time, well, I'll we'll just open the floor to the audience to react, ask any questions, make any comments or reflections in the next five to 10 minutes. So feel free to type your questions in the chat box. You can send them directly to me or you can just unmute your mic and speak. Thank you. Any questions, any comments? Any reflections? I think a lot of them 
a lot of them are oh yeah one is 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 clapping her hands to say great presentation um i think a lot of them may be appreciating this information for the first time so it may quite be a lot i think maybe you know people mm. may need <laughs> us to break down this even yeah. further maybe to speak on specific uh, areas you know maybe even mm -hmm. as simple as how to take uh, an occupational history or even to speak about diseases um you know mm -hmm. specifically so that they can understand them and not maybe generalize them into one group because um i i i do remember that you know as a as a junior medical officer um or even as a medical student now at UV they teach occupational medicine but back then or rather occupational health but back during my day we didn't touch it at all intensive um my years as a medical officer um you know so I was really blank and I couldn't make causation um or casual, or casual relationships between what the patient has been presenting with and the workspaces and what to look for and who to refer to, who to consult with. I didn't even know there was such a thing as an occupational health specialist or occupational medicine specialist. So I think I think there's a lot that we're still trying to um mm -hmm. oh yeah. So there's a question there's a question here and then actually I, I forgot to ask you maybe to 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 touch on it. So it says which facilities have occupational physicians for for referrals? I think uh Fernandez is um maybe mostly asking for government um related, but I uh, but I think yeah. you can touch on this and then you can just touch on when mm -hmm. private space and also which clinic where your clinic is based so that people know where to refer. Yeah, yeah. In government, we have uh, the Bosala Kuku in uh, Bosala Kuku Clinic in um, uh, Um, It was initially started as a, a, a center, like a, an occupational health center, but mainly for, a, it was mainly taking the ex minors. Um, it was or the intention is to expand it to, you know, take uh, not just X minus, but all cases of uh, occupational health or occupational medicine, sorry. Uh, occupational health is more broad. Uh, so you, if you have a patient in government, I would uh, definitely take a call and, uh, and talk to Dr. Kala um, in, um, in Busala Koko. Uh, he's an occupational medicine practitioner as well. Uh, so he knows his stuff. Uh, I think he's been working there since it was uh, it, it was it started. Uh, I don't remember when that was, but a few years back. Uh, so please do you can refer them. I have had people calling me and sometimes asking and I always refer them to 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 them they can they can do the diagnosis and everything they have resources like they have the x-rays they have uh, their own gene expert machine they have the spirometry metry they have audiometry they have everything in private we are actually quite many that do practice occupational medicine. It's just that we are not known. <laughs> I am. Uh, I have my office in uh, Extension Nine. It's called Fem Occup Clinic. Um, I know there is Dr. Lesedinyani in Bukamuso. Uh, there is a Dr. Um, Ostella. Uh, he, he she is in Habroni. Her clinic is called Premium. Oh, I forgot to take those names. I can attach them, write them in the at the at the end of my list or my presentation. There, there is Doctor. There is Koala uh, in Sikloa. Uh, Doctor Kushata is there. There is Stockford a Clinic. Uh, there is MRI also in uh, in Gaps. Uh, there are also other in the in the in Maum. We have Dr. Max and Dr. Spin. 
Uh, the others are unfortunately working in uh, companies and uh, they do take only their own companies out uh, as soon. Uh, but I can note down uh, to you who we can uh, refer to. I don't know if Dr. Taini Masube does take at UB. If she does take patients, I'm not sure. Occupational medicine patients. Yeah. So, so that is about that, uh, about the phys physicians. Hmm. Okay. No, amazing, perfect. Did you did you did you touch on where you are based and how people can <laughs> contact you? Uh, yes, yes, I did say that I am in uh, extension line. Uh, my clinic is called uh, Fem Occup Clinic. It's for family and occupational medicine. So combined the two names and um, um extension nine. Um, the number. I don't know if I should say all those things, but. Uh, um, if you uh, you go on to LinkedIn, you'll find me there. Um, Instagram, yeah, such things. Family Care Clinic. Okay, no, perfect. I think maybe just to encourage, um, it's just that we, we didn't have a, a, a huge turnout, but I'd say that um, Giva is also part of um, BDU, which means that she's in the BDU WhatsApp group. So I think where we are in doubt, we can always throw a question in the group and maybe even tag her. Um, and, you know, she can assist you in knowing whether this is a case to refer to her or not, or whether you need um, to do something else as well. So I think that's the power and benefit of this family um, that is called BDU. Um, so if there's no... Um, other questions or comments or reflections, I'd like to take this opportunity to deeply and graciously and immensely thank Giva for giving us such a great talk and teaching us on something that quite a lot of us are not familiar with. We know that this won't be the last presentation from her side, specifically on Oc Health. Um, so thank you so much, Giva. Um, and then I would also, I would also like to thank the audience for making that time as well, and being attentive and listening and being part of this session. We have recorded the session, so definitely the session that we will share with everyone. So this is a session that we have um, recorded, so we'll definitely share. I also ask Kiva to just share with us her presentation so that people can also appreciate as well as the contacts that she mentioned so that if anyone wants to ask any further questions, refer any patients, they can do so. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Charles. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Geba. Thank you, Charles.